Next, we're going to go ahead and do Henri Rousseau's Middle Ground. And in the Middle Ground, you will see all kinds of things going on in his paintings. And the more you look, the more you'll see. Sometimes things are hidden in his jungle, fantasy jungle paintings. Um, for example, he loved to have monkeys um, actively playing, and sometimes they're throwing oranges at each other. Um, in one painting, I think he's having them well, here's one where one of them is upside down in the tree. So using your imagination, you can um, decide how you want to put your monkeys. Here's another one right here. He looks like he's scratching his head. And then I have another one down here. Just kind of sitting on a, looks like he's sitting on a rock or something there. Um, but he often put monkeys in. His middle ground. Of course, he put lots of tropical plants in the middle ground. And here, this is one of my favorites. Here we have a bird sitting on an orange tree and then hiding in the back in the middle ground is actually an elephant. So after you've done your composition, you can go ahead and put in some animals in the very uh, back, hiding in these bushes. Uh, but you want to get all your plants and things in first before you do that. Um, I did have a really cool picture I want to show you quick before I forget of a, where, which one was that? Of a, um, I think it was a banana. Was it a banana tree? Here's some more, here's another example of the tropical. These are those exaggerated lilies or water lilies actually, or lotus plants here. And then we have this unusual cactuses for your middle ground. But I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to do an orange tree. So find a place where you'd like to start off your orange tree. An orange tree with monkeys. And we're gonna go ahead and simply sketch out the orange tree. So when you're preparing your trees, if you already have your foreground and you should already have your foreground drawn, see how I start the tree? It goes behind your plants. Don't draw on top of them. That way you don't have to erase because the foreground things are in the front. Now we're going to the middle ground and then of course we'll do the background, okay? So we're gonna go ahead, do your tree, like I said, skipping behind. And I'm gonna start from the bottom of the page and I'm gonna go right to the top. And it does not have to be a perfectly straight line. You do want it to be thinner here and slowly taper thicker, like a natural tree. And then we want a branch that comes out horizontally and slightly curves up. Come out horizontally and slightly curving over. And I'm gonna do it thicker where it meets the tree and then it tapers to thin. And actually with this orange tree, the, it kind of tips as it comes down. And then we'll put in some, some nice large leaves. But let's go ahead and do the monkey head first. So jump down about two fingers and we're gonna do a large oval. That's gonna be about two fingers uh, long here. So make sure you can measure top, bottom, and then just connect them. And then I'm gonna do a kind of a smaller one in the inside, so it kind of looks like a donut. And this will be the inside of the face. If you look here, you see how I ha he has a ring around the inside of the face. And for the face, we're just gonna simply do two little circles, uh, an L shape for a nose, and two little lines here for the mouth. We're not getting a lot of detail inside our face. Now we're gonna come off. Okay. Now we're gonna come off here and we're gonna give him uh, part of his shoulders on each side. So I'm gonna go a about a finger, a finger and measure. And then these are his arms that are gonna reach up and grab the branches. So I'm gonna come up to the branch, up to the branch. And then his hand is gonna come up and around, up and around. And then you can just put in a little finger lines here, just kind of like back and forth wavy on your branch. Now this line will drop down and just kind of connect it, have it taper in to 
the head here. Now don't make these really skinny. Look, they're a little bit thinner than a finger because he, his arms need to be pretty strong to support his body. Now I'm gonna jump down about two fingers and this is going to be a mark here and here on each side. This is where it's going to taper in a little bit and then I'm gonna taper it back out. And then I'm gonna have a center. Find your two dots. I'm gonna do a center line and then his legs. This is gonna taper down. So I've slightly curved it down. Whoops, I'm losing it. And then I'm coming out for a foot. He doesn't do a lot of detail. He's all usually just furry. This is pretty big, this little monkey guy. And then I'm just gonna taper this down and I'm gonna make it a backwards L and connect it to the foot. And I'm gonna do the same on the other side, but most of this, he will be, this will be hidden behind, um, like actually what I'm looking at right here. This, see how his rest of his body's hidden behind all these leaves and plants? But if you don't have it hidden, we're just gonna taper it down. And I did this as a slight curve here. And then I'm going to tape curve out and in. And then I'm going to do an L shape for a foot and just kind of connect it. And there's little toes in here. But all of this is just covered with fur anyways. Now, say your, your monkey's off or your guidelines don't show. Well, you're going to be covering this with an oil pastel works great to make fur. You know, you're going to add some fur in here, short lines of fur in here with oil pastel, just to give him a little furry color. Look at, let's check out Rousseau's fur. And like I said, oil pastel or paint works good for this too. Use all your different values of oil pastels. You know, your light browns and dark browns and medium browns and creams and whites on top. The whites are the highlights as you color this in. And then I'm not gonna color it all in with fur right now. You, you, you get the idea of how to do your fur. So that's basically how to sketch out your monkey. Now to do the tree, let's get that tree in. Rousseau's leaves. This is his stylized orange tree, because orange trees don't grow like this with perfect lines coming off like this, okay? But go ahead, if you wanna copy his style, we're gonna do uh, rows of these leaves. So I do a leaf seg section and it comes off on the other side and his is shaped like a curve, like a U, and then up and back. That's how he does his leaves for this orange tree. Now make these really large because if you look, when you draw leaves and stuff, if you draw them really small, you're gonna have to color in all these leaves. So exaggerate it like he did and give yourself some really large leaves in here. And then of course, as you're doing your leaves, you can put in some oranges. And look how the oranges are behind. They're overlapping. The leaves are overlapping the oranges. And then in some cases, the oranges are overlapping the leaves and branches. So you wanna make sure you have overlapping. Here's a curve of a giant orange. And this creates depth in your painting and also more interest. As the leaves come to the end of the tree, they can get smaller. So your curves, make your seg sections coming off. Like that. Overlap your leaves. It's okay if they go behind each other like that. That even X, uh, makes more interest, like I was saying. and have them in different directions, not all lined up perfect. I'm gonna put an orange in here because this is a big area. Keep your oranges all about the same size too. We talked about variation, but um, you don't want it to be artificial looking. You know, some really huge, some small. Basically when oranges are, are on the tree, ripe and orange, they are almost all the same size. Let's just stick an orange. I'm going to put an orange here. If I put my oranges in first, it kind of makes it more interesting. And then I'll put an orange near the monkey over here. 
and then I'm going to go ahead and do my leaves in here but you get the idea of how we fill it. Now you're gonna go ahead and fill in all that. Now add, you can add more branches. I didn't show you the branches. You wanna have more branches coming on your orange tree, not just two. We could have some branches in here behind, coming this way. And a branch branches up and out. And like I said, it gets thicker where it meets each other and then thinner. And same thing on this side. We can add branches coming out this way on your tree. But now that you get the idea, maybe a branch on this tree too, then you can continue this. Now you invent the rest. You add more trees, leaves, branches, etc., and oranges. Now I'm going to show you what else to put in your foreground. I mean, excuse me, this is your middle ground. So we've got middle ground. There was another plant, let's see. Oh, we could do a simple bird, a bird or a snake. In one of his paintings, he did have a snake and it's actually one of his most famous jungle pictures. Here's a um, tiger as well. He put in tigers and lions in his middle ground. So if you want to add tigers and lions, you can. Here, this one's actually raining. A banana tree. Yeah, I'm going to show you the banana tree. Here's the banana tree I wanted to show you here. This stylized banana tree. So that's a different type of a plant that we can put in the background. So let's go ahead and do that. That way you have a banana tree for your foreground, or middle ground rather. So the banana tree has the stalk that's pretty straight. It goes from thick at the bottom to thin, thinner at the top as it comes up. I'm just going to have it come behind here. And then it has these long, pretty thick fat. So come off the tree and it flares out almost like a V shape for the leaves. And then it comes pretty long and big and rounded. That's the stylized banana tree leaves that he does. Come out, almost V-shape. Now this is gonna go right off the page here. And he continues his leaves, come out, pretty large. Now the banana leaves are way bigger than the orange. They're bigger and longer. So coming out, your V-shape, See how it forms that V almost? They were boxy. And then long, there. He did have a little bit, not a lot of detail, but if you wanna put the center in, you can. I like adding that into my banana leaves. And then the actual banana part, let's get this one on this side. So that's if you choose to do bananas. It fills up a lar large area, that's what's nice about it. Um, but at the actual banana part, let me show you. It would be higher up on the tree. I'm just running out of room here. I'm gonna show you lower. They, he has them coming down. He has them coming off of a stem, which technically the bananas are really coming up off the top, way up at the top of the tree if you are doing it realistically but this is his fantasy pictures so you can have it come off the tree and then his bananas and I believe that's what these things are called these giant yellow ones so I'm coming out and back curve and back curve and back see how I'm doing it the opposite curve and back you want it to be pointy here Curve and back, curve and back. Let me show you close up his groupings of bananas. And I believe that's what he's trying to make here. That's what they look like. But realistically, they're at the very, like I said, very, very top of the page. If you want to even just do some banana, giant bananas like this in groupings, you can right at the very top, too. That makes it more interesting. 
Okay, and there we have our middle ground. So some of the elements in Rousseau's middle ground. Um, now, if you want to add a bird, a snake, you can always pop in circle, I, and I have separate videos on how to draw these, out and back, line, and then you can just stick your body in. Okay, and you can stick birds anywhere you want. If you want to have a wing here, you can have part of a wing showing here. Now, his, the rest of his body is behind that leaf. You can even add a branch. And then you can have snakes coming down and around. The snake charmer is one of um, Rousseau's uh, famous jungle paintings. And he has an interesting snake. And when you do snakes, you do not want them. Let's see if I can find it quick. You do not want them to... Um, to be a straight line. You want it to wrap in and around the branch of the tree, realistically. I will show you the snake charmer if I can find it on the um, background painting. But this is our conclusion of our middle ground.